Hello, welcome to week two. This week, our focus is on online course design basics. I am Professor Inegbedion Juliet Owajaji. The focus for the week, we're going to be looking at four units in this week. This last unit, unit five, is going to be a live section where we're going to meet real time through video conferencing. Now, what are we going to be doing in unit one? We'll be applying adding model in online course design. Unit two is focused on learning objective and learning outcomes. Unit three is on applying pedagogy in online learning. And unit four is on learning activities and resources for online learning. Now, let us begin with unit one. Unit one is applying adding model in online course design. We're going to be looking at adding model in this unit. Adding model is one model out of several models that you can use in designing your courses. And we are picking adding model for this purpose. And we're going to see how you can use adding model to design your online course and how you can integrate open educational resources into your online course through the use of adding model. Now, what are the learning outcomes? By the end of this unit, you will be able to analyze online learning needs and environments. You will be able to design online learning content that requires open educational resources. You'll be able to develop online learning content, integrating open educational resources. You'll be able to implement developed online learning content with integrated open educational resources. And you'll be able to evaluate an online learning content with integrated open educational resources. Now, why course design? It's a big question. Why do I need to design my course? And what is even this course design? And why do I need to do this before I can integrate my open educational resource? There are three basic importance that the course design will provide. First is learning effectiveness. Learning is considered effective when the learner can acquire and utilize the knowledge gained. Again, we have to look at the consistency and the quality of material produced. Because when you have a material for online, what we're looking at for is the quality of that material. That is what we sustain the learners to learn through that particular course. And if you design your course, it helps to bring this quality into play. It helps you to ensure that the quality is consistent from the beginning to the end of that material. Then the third point is that it helps in evaluation. You could evaluate the effectiveness of the course, working through the process, the delivery. And in this case, it is being known that a design course is easier to evaluate than a course derived without a design. The process of educational evaluation often consider the input process and the output. So when you design your course, you are able to bring these three elements into place. You are able to look at the input, you are able to consider the process, and you are able to consider the output. Now, adding model. What is adding model? What is it all about? Adding has five steps. Adi is cyclical. It is developed from the linear to the cyclical. It's continuous. So let's see how Adi works. This is Adi model. And now each letter in Adi represents an element. You have five letters, A, D, D, I, E. And each letter of the world represents an element. Let's look at the first element. A represents analysis. What do you do at the process of analysis? In analysis, you have to do what we call 
they need analysis. You're going to look at the environment, look at the situation of ground. You're going to look at the goal. What is the goal that this cause self stand to solve? What is the need for this cause? Why is it required? What are the available infrastructure that will be needed to support this cause? What is the institutional support if you are developing it for an institution? Now, what are the policies on ground? You're going to look through all this before you can take a decision to proceed to the next level, which is design. That is the first D, representing design. You now go to the next level, design. And in design, what do you do? The information you've gathered during the analysis, you now come up to work with it during the design. In the design, you are building a skeletal frame of what the material is going to be. And in this process, you are going to prepare what we call the learning, uh, the lesson plan, or with some people refer to it as table of specification, where you are going to analyze and present all the elements that you will require in your course. And within the lesson plan, you're going to show the topic, you're going to show the learning outcome, the learning activities, learning resources, the pedagogy, and the kind of assessment that will be carried out. Now, when you are done with the design stage, you now come up to the development stage. That is the second D, development. At the development stage, what happens? You're going to work with what you have in the analysis and the design and pull them together to develop the content. Remember what you design is skeletal. Now you're going to put flesh into the skeletal design. And in that doing that, you cannot think of ways in which you can accomplish this. One way is to start writing it from the scratch. You are holding your design and you are writing from scratch. Another way could that be looking at your design and see if you can get an open educational resource material that will fit into your design. And in this regard, you can take a whole book, a whole course, and you fit it in because you are looking at your design if it suits it. And in most cases, you may not have such. You may have a part. Going through your design is likely that the aspect of your design is the activities that will require an open educational resource. So what do you do? You look for an open educational resource that will match that activity that you needed it for. And when you are done with the development, which can now come in different formats, it could be in the video format, it could be in the reading format. And when you are equally looking for an OER, you may take an OER that is in video format. You may take an OER that is in reading format, like a book, like a, a journal. Or you can equally take an OER that is in the voice format, audio. Now, when you do all this, it helps you to work through. Now, the next process we're going to look at is implementation. You have analyzed, you have designed, you have developed. At the stage of implementation, what do you now do? At the stage of implementation, you now have to deploy it to the users. But before you do that, you need to put that content into a test to see whether it will actually meet the purpose for which it was prepared. And there are two ways you could go about this. First is for you to use better tests or you use what we call pilot testing. If you are using the better test, what is going to happen is for you to look for professionals within what you have developed to critique the material, to critique the content, to critique what you have done in there, and you now pick their information, work with it to review the material before you deploy it. And if you have to use the pilot testing, in the pilot testing, you have to look for audience that have the same characteristics with the audience that are going to use that material. 
In this regard, they may not be students. If they are students, look for students that fall within the category that will use that same material. Then you release the content to them to use the way you know you want to deploy it. And after you use it, you give them questionnaire to answer for you. And you analyze the questionnaire, use the findings to now review the content before you deploy it. And finally, is the evaluation, which is the E. At the process of evaluation, you now need to evaluate the content to see whether it was able to meet the stated learning outcomes. You evaluate the process, you evaluate the delivery, you evaluate the infrastructure, and see if there was any gap that hinders the full success of that particular course. And again, you will equally go and uh, uh, use what you have found out, you take it back to this process. That is why it's cyclical. You see, we started with analysis, design, development, implementation, evaluation. And once you get from the evaluation process, your findings, you take it back to review and it goes down again. Because at times, after the analysis of the evaluation process, what you get will demand some review of your analysis, design, then you develop again and you implement and you evaluate again. That is why it's a cycle. Now, one could ask, do I need to wait to the end before I evaluate the process? Not necessarily, but this is a bigger evaluation that comes at this end. From each step, from each stage, you can carry out an evaluation. But this is a bigger one that we have fed all of them all through. So adding model is a very nice model. Working with it simplified and help you come up with quality content. Now, conclusion. Adi model has five steps. Analysis, design, development, implementation, and evaluation. The model is cyclical. It gives attention to details needed for quality course content. Thank you for listening.